Welcome to Rassel and Rants Reviews, and this is episode 16, and this is the anticipated TNA rant. Probably even more so after Victory Road this past Sunday, and we'll probably get that to near the end. And this episode may be a little long-winded, so it just might be a part two. So let's get on with our little rant about TNA. I know a lot of you may know or may not know, but I'm a solid fan of TNA. And a lot of you may ask yourselves why. And sometimes I ask myself why, especially after this past Sunday. Um, and my review and results for TNA Victory Road, I think I was a little too generous with them. But it's, the whole pay-per-view isn't bad. It had its spots, and the main event was terrible. But we'll get into that later. I got a few things I want to talk about in general, key points here. And we'll get on to the rest. So first of all being the TNA Knockouts and or TNA Knockouts Division. I just don't know what's gone wrong with this division since January of 10, 2010. Um, since the Hogan regime came in, a lot of great knockouts have left. And it seems almost like it's on the back burner, the division. You know, Awesome Kong left. Uh, was Gale gone before Hogan? Maybe. But you lose Roxy, ODB, um, Taylor Wilde, Hamada. All these women knockouts can wrestle. Come on, folks. Remember what TNA was built on? Wrestling. You know, um, these women could go. Now you're left with the only couple people left that can wrestle are Tara, Sarita, Mickey, and sometimes Madison Rain. Uh, the rest of them suck. And you're all probably thinking, well, what about Angelina Love? She's pretty good. Only when she wants to be. You know? Uh, what about Katie Lee Birchall or Winter? Only when she wants to be. Um, Velvet Sky? Pfft, eye candy. Rosita? Pfft, who is she? Um, who else does it leave? Uh, Daphne's not with them no more. So, did they bring ODB back for full time? I don't know. Did they bring Roxy back for full time? I don't know. Should they? Yes. But even the storylines are gone. I know they're trying to push one with Mickey James, and it seems like the only one they're really trying to push. Except for now, maybe the beautiful people are splitting up. Again. <laughs> How many times can you go to there and do that over and over? They're going to split up. They're going to split up. Uh, Sarita and Rosita and the beautiful people. I don't know. I don't know. But it seems like it's got a back burner since uh, the Hogan regime came. <clears throat> and that's terrible because that was one of the main reasons TNA stood out. Other than my next topic, and I'll get to there in a second, but the TNA Knockouts division was hardcore. And not hardcore country, but it was excellent. You had street fights, you had main events on Impact. You don't have women main events on WWE or anywhere else. Well, maybe in Shimmer or something like that, but... You know, you had Kong and Gil Kim main eventing Impact, you know? Um, that stuff was unheard of, and they were solid matches. They were better than some of the guy matches earlier in the night. Uh, and they let it go to crap. Moving on to the X Division. The X Division is another reason uh, TNA is great. Hopefully they're turning that around. I know they want to, apparently. But X Division, you got to remember TNA. Before you wanted to be WWE Junior or number two. You guys. It was all X Division. You know, I remember watching on the weekly pay-per-views. It was AJ Styles and Jerry Lynn and Shark Boy and... You look know, Skipper and Christopher Daniels and so on and so forth. Plethora of guys busting their ass. Matt Bentley, um, Chris Sabin, Alex Shelley, all these guys, Johnny Devine. You know, they were all busting their asses for TNA and putting TNA on the map. And now what are they doing? Half of those guys I mentioned aren't even with the company anymore. Um, terrible. Terrible. TNA is what put you on the or X Division is what put you on the map. Work with it, deal with it. Um, let them be in the forefront. Once you guys became WWE Light or Wannabe Junior, all your main event guys are the focus, just like WWE. You know, your Angles, your uh, Andersons, your Stings. Sting. We'll get onto him later. Oh my God, Sting. Nashes, etc. You know, 
you have a great product. You guys told stories in the ring with your wrestling. You didn't need these hokey storylines. Um, us guessing who's good and who's bad each and every week. What direction you're going. Why you're sending people home. None of this was happening until you wanted to compete. Don't compete. Make money. Be the alternative. That's all you have to be. Try, stop trying to beef up, you know. Stop trying to beef up your roster. You have a hell of a roster. Just to get noticed, and that's what we're going on to next. How are you guys going to get noticed? Well, this is one way you guys can get noticed. If you're going to hire people like Kevin Nash, the Nasty Boys, Team 3D, well, you already you done already with them. You know, all these WWE has or rejects or whatever, let your TNA talent go over on them. If you got the band versus beer money, beer money should have been going on, over on them every night. For people that don't watch TNA, they recognize like, oh, beer money, uh, who's beer money? They just beat the band? They just beat the Wolfpack? They just beat NWO? Well, they must be worth watching. Or having AJ Styles not lose the RVD, like the first or second week that RVD's there. Um, let him go over so people are like, wow, AJ Styles. You know, because he's not a mainstream name, really. He's not a WWE mark name. But RVD is. People remember. So if you got AJ Styles going over RVD, that's going to put AJ Styles out there. People might tune into TNA. You know what I'm saying? Put your TNA homegrown talent over. Put them over. You know, don't bring in Jeff Hardy. I love Anderson. You know, bring these guys in. But let them do the jobs for the TNA guys. Then let them come to a head and have their chance. You know, that's that's what you just need to do. Um, what do we have here? Um, I guess this kind of goes in with it too, is making new stars. You've tried. you got like Doug Williams, who's awesome. <coughs> Magnus. Devin, Desmond Wolf. All these guys you can help push instead of making new... Bu buying talent, make talent. And what you need to do with that is get noticed. And how you get noticed is not only just letting them get over, but you need another show. And not explosion. Or not another reaction. Or whatever. Saved by the Bell or Herbie Hot Seat, Sadler or whatever. You need a show like a SmackDown, a B show. So you can take these young talents and some of the talents you don't use anymore, like Amazing Reds. Or this new guy Crimson, or whoever, Suicide. You know, your character development is terrible. So with the second show, you can have, you know, them being developed, to develop better on the second show. It's trying to shove them down our throats and put a character on them in two weeks. You know, oh, here he is on Impact, and he's so awesome, it's Okado. Or whoever. It's Crimson. He's awesome. He's a monster. Let him evolve in front of our eyes. Not just push him and cram him down our throats. Um, and having a second show will help with your booking too. You have a huge talent roster. You know? But with a second show it will be easier. Because on Monday Night or not sorry Monday Night. Uh, Thursday Night Impacts. You're not going to have to have a booking team that's always writing run-ins. Six mans. Four ways. Um, you know, outcomes that are going to be so predictable, you know, you can have these other talents on another show, building their character and working with Holt having to be a run in. Um, I don't know what you guys do to market each other, but if I wasn't a fan of TNA, I would have known to go to Oshawa for your very first house show or pay-per-view or Windsor for house show or London, which you promised an impact. If I wasn't a fan of TNA to begin with, I would have known to go there. So I don't know what you guys are doing with your marketing in these fields, but guess what? You have to do something better. You have to. If my local indie around here outdraws you, what's good for that? You know? Um, it's terrible. Um, you just have to get noticed. Instead of being 30 million in the hole, <laughs> you know, I don't know what you gotta do, but do something different. You know, get better agents, get better creative, get better marketers, 
something. Put a better product on TV. <laughs> I love the talent. I love the in-ring uh, wrestling. That's why I watch TNA. When I watch TNA, you know what? I usually don't watch it live. I don't watch nothing live anymore. Because I hate it. I hate watching TNA live because I hate watching the hokey programs, like storylines, and trying to guess who's good or evil. I'll watch it on YouTube, and I'll fast-forward it, and I'll watch the matches. WWE, hate to talk about it on TNA, but I do the same. If I watch Raw, I'll fast-forward the wrestling because it sucks, and watch the promos. So, uh, you might want to practice your promos better. You might want to get your storylines better. I have no idea. But let's talk about Victory Road. Let's rant about that a little bit. I don't know what we're in there for time. Um, usually it's only about 15 minutes per show on uh, YouTube. But... Um, just to get over some TNA stuff from Victory Road, terrible pay-per-view. Um, I can't say terrible, because I, I, when I ranted or gave the review on it, I thought it wasn't bad, but, you know, it's got its points where, like, every tag team is going to implode. Every tag team that was showed on DNA uh, Victory Road is going to implode. Um, the women's match sucked. Um, the six man sucked. Hernandez and Morgan sucked. Um, what else did we have? A double DQ for no one contenders. Not a bad match. Could have been better because, like I said, they don't clash. They didn't fit. It sucks with the out outcome of that. Brutal. And then, I don't know how to spoil it for TNA Impact, but doing what you did there for the number one contenders again sucks. Um, the main event. For TNA Victory Road. Sucked. Like, regardless of Jeff Hardy being stoned or fucking drunk or whatever his case was. You do not let him go out there. You guys got creative teams. You got a writer. Do something with it or about it. Um, write him out. He could have been in a car accident. He could have missed his plane. He could have been... Um, he could have had a relapse at home, and he could have said that or something. But you're creative. You could have had the main event or the, t the number one contenders match at the beginning of the show. And let that be an opener. That'd be a hell of an opener, wouldn't it? You know, and then the winner versus thing in the main event. Or make it a three-way that you're going to do anyways. But terrible, terrible, terrible. And when this thing agrees with the crowd that it's bullshit, then it's bullshit. And I don't like Sting. I like Sting, but I don't like him in TNA. <laughs> he's always going to be at the top. And he's always going to have the belt. You know, put the... It's, it's terrible. But uh, highlights of TNA Victory Road. I don't care what people are saying. Bully Ray and T, uh, T Tommy Dreamer was good. So what? I had a blow-up doll and a friggin' um, a plushy, whatever, despicable me toy. No Bubba shouldn't have sold it like that, but you know what? So what? Um... I've seen a lot worse. Pretty good match, all in all. Um, AJ and Matt was pretty good. Match of the night. Um, what else was there? I don't even know. I don't even remember. Um, oh, beer money. Beer money is always, you know, guaranteed to help put on a good match. Because Robert Roode's the ring general. He really is. Robert Roode's the man. Um, then you got the Ultimate X, always spotty and full of fun. But, uh, I don't know. But that's my random TNA. There may be more to come, I'm just uh, hot at TNA right now, and so yeah, that's episode 16, folks, as always, I'm your host, Big Mike, and stay tuned for more Rasslin' Ransom reviews, oh, P.S., subscribe, comment, like or dislike, send an email, and uh, we'll see you soon.